We've been using the iPhone 15 lineup for the last couple of weeks since launch, and even though this is a great upgrade this year, they definitely have some problems. And I know you guys are saying that we're Apple shills, we're gonna defend Apple to the death, but in this video, we are gonna go through the top 10 problems after two weeks. Now with that said, let's get into problem number one, which is actually one of my favorite parts about it, which is the new titanium metal finish and frame on the Pro and Pro Max. When Apple revealed this new titanium finish, they made it seem like it was very, very strong. However, I actually have a scratch on it. After only two weeks, I don't even know how this happened, there's a scratch on the blue finish and it sticks out like an eyesore. And that's probably because apparently titanium is actually a softer metal than stainless steel. And of course they have that special PVD coating, which I guess is notorious for scratching. So you guys have to really be careful and get yourself a good case. And even worse with this new titanium finish, it's been fingerprint madness. I thought the fingerprints would totally go away, but they are still here on the 15 Pro models. And getting into number two, one of the big issues that many people have been experiencing over the past couple of weeks has been overheating. Some people even showed that their phone stopped charging because it was simply too hot. And people complained that they're basically just going through Instagram or whatever else, even in the background, their phone is getting insanely hot. Now, ever since then, Apple has finally released an update and a lot of people are saying it's been getting fixed. And some people even prior to that said that they turned off background app refresh for Instagram and that magically solved all of the issues. Of course, we do know that the A17 Pro chip is a very hot chip, in some cases using 40% more power than the A16, which led to a lot of throttling in gaming. But since the update, I've done some testing and to my surprise, I played a bunch of games at max brightness and the display didn't even dim. The performance was just fine. I'm actually shocked at how well it's been working. So while overheating was an issue, it does seem like it's getting a lot better. And if you're really worried about overheating, there's also the Razer phone cooler, which I have tested and it seriously gets insanely cold down to three degrees Celsius to basically stop your eye from, from heat soaking and reducing FPS in games, especially those AAA titles that are coming very soon. So if you wanna check that out, use the link down below. Now on to problem number three, we have an issue with the main cameras, the 48 megapixel sensor on both the Pro and the Pro Max, and now the entire lineup have that new sensor. The issue is that when you get too close to something, like when you're trying to scan a check or take a close-up photo, it automatically switches to the ultra wide camera, which can totally ruin the quality. And that's because this new sensor has terrible minimum focus distance. We actually did a comparison between the 15 Pro, 14 Pro and 13 Pro. And the crazy thing was the 13 Pro one and all of those close up comparison tests. So that's a big issue that's happening with these new 48 megapixel cameras. And I really hope that Apple can fix it in the future. Now, Moving on to problem number four, of course we know that the Pro Max has the new 5X telephoto camera, which is absolutely amazing, and you gotta pay a lot of extra cash to get it. $200 more for the Pro Max compared to the iPhone 15 Pro. Of course, you do get double the storage, which is nice, so it's a $100 difference. But when you're zooming in, between 3X and 4.9X, the cheaper 15 Pro actually gives you better photo quality. That's because you're skipping from literally the 1X lens all the way up to 5X optical. So everything in between is not as good as on the Pro. Of course, they have the 2X, which kind of crops into the sensor and it's really good on both of these, but between 3X and 4.9, the quality does go down. Now on to problem number five, because of this new rounded edge design, the entire iPhone 15 lineup is now literally more fragile than it was before. Multiple drop tests have shown that the 15 lineup is faring worse 
than previous models, basically cracking faster. And if you don't believe that, it actually makes sense because if you take a look at the front glass, because it now curves around and it uses 2.5D glass, it's now more exposed and it's easier to basically hit a little rock in the, just the right place and shatter the entire display on both the front and the back glass as well. Whereas previously, with the iPhone 14, 13, and 12s, you had the metal that extended all the way to the edge with the flat, more sharp corners, and that would really protect the display glass. But now, it is definitely more fragile. Now moving on to problem number six. Yes, of course, we do have the new USB-C port, which has been amazing, and it can actually charge other devices, like let's say your AirPods, your Apple Watch, basically anything you want, even the Razer phone cooler, which gets insanely cold, powered from the port itself, but there has been an issue that people have experienced. Some people have tried to charge their iPhone 15 Pro using a battery bank. However, the iPhone was actually charging the battery bank, doing it the wrong way. So somebody came back, their iPhone was dead, and their battery bank had a higher charge, which is completely not what's supposed to happen. So basically the only solution that they found at the moment was to try to charge the iPhone via the USB-A port on the battery bank if it has one to avoid the direction going the wrong way. So hopefully Apple can fix this to make sure that doesn't happen to anybody in the future because they'll get screwed with a dead iPhone. For problem number seven, to my surprise, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is supposed to be very strong, especially with the titanium frame, is the first iPhone in many years that actually failed the bend test from Jerry Rig everything. Yes, you saw him try to bend it and boom, the glass shattered. Apparently what happened is that Apple removed a certain piece on the inside, kind of like a metal frame piece, just on the 15 Pro Max. And then Jerry Rig also tested the 15 Plus and it did not bend. So it's only the Pro Max that is having this major issue, and it's kind of a little bit sad, especially with the titanium. Now for problem number eight, we have the regular iPhone 15 models, and guess what? These are the most expensive phones in the world that still have 60 hertz displays. This should not be a thing in late 2023. This is ridiculous. Apple should have given us at least 90 hertz to somewhat stay competitive. Now I know the general public doesn't care that much, they might not even notice, but in terms of the specs and experience in comparisons to other Android phones that are much cheaper, this is a big deal. What's basically happening is that Apple lives in their own little world, pretending that the only phones that exist are their iPhone 15s and 15 Pros, so they basically skimp out on some regular 15 features in order to make the Pro models look good. And yes, that does work to boost sales of the Pros. And then of course we have problem number nine, which is once again, the USB-C port, but on the regular 15 models. The speeds are insanely slow at 480 megabits per second. Basically, the slowest USB-C port in existence on an expensive $800 and $900 iPhone. Apple probably did this just to make the pros look a lot better, and this is very annoying. Even though not many people actually use the port for transferring, it just sucks that they're making this limitation. And then finally, for problem number 10, we have the action button on the new iPhone 15 Pro models. And the big issue is that you could only do one thing at a time. Even if you wanna toggle the silent mode, you have to basically go back and forth between your customizable actions back to the silent mode, or I even found myself having to go into the control center instead to toggle silent mode because the action button can only do one thing and I'd rather have it do something more unique and useful. What Apple should have done was enable some new features where you can single tap for something like silent mode, double tap for something else, and then also tap and hold 
for another action. They should have gave us flexibility like that so we could have multiple things at once, multiple actions, not just one at one time. That would have been so much better in terms of functionality, but they left us with just one. So there you guys go. Those are the top 10 problems after two weeks with the entire iPhone 15 lineup. Let me know which one you've personally experienced and what annoys you down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe above and check out one of those two over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.